Hey guys, this is Camera37. Sorry if my mic sounds a little off. It's kind of broken. So you might have to turn up your volume. So I'm going to do on a video on how to start up on chemistry. So, really depends what you want to do. Do you want to do like a bio, um, being a biochemist or you want to be a pharmacist or a biologist? And if you like learning about organic molecules or drugs and things like that, you may like organic chemistry more. But if you like learning about atoms from like the periodic table, or if you want to go in the field of like making alloys or things like that, you might want to be an inorganic chemist. You can pick both, but it will be a lot more expensive. Um, this video will be on you know inorganic chemistry, by the way, because that's what more kind of what I do more. So you're going to need test tubes. You should also get a test tube holder. Those are really helpful too, but you need a test tube stand and several test tubes. They're pretty cheap too and you, you really need them. I will also just let, give you a break to pause it if you want to read more. I'm not going to read it all. You will need graduated cylinders. I don't have any of these rubber things that keeps it from breaking if it falls over, but so those are good to have. You will need several of these. I like 10 millimeter ones the best because that's I measure in small amounts usually. You'll need beakers. Pyrex is a good brand, but you do not need Pyrex because they're really expensive, but they are nice. You'll need several beakers. I use them a lot. You need flasks. I don't have any wide mouth flasks, but they're really good because it has a wider mouth. So those are good to have. Um, I have probably like four or five of these. I don't use them a whole lot though. Droppers. Plastic pipettes are cheap, they're easy to use, and they're easy to clean, but they are inaccurate and flimsy. Measuring pipettes are accurate and they're really precise, but they are expensive and they're hard to clean and they're kind of an overkill if you're just starting. Glass pipettes are cheap too and they're also easy to clean and they're sturdy but there's no measurement and sometimes I mean this, this black rubber piece can come off really easily so you know if you're not using gloves which you should be it kind of freaks you out sometimes. Storage bottles. In the HDPE bottles that means acid or chemicals won't really eat through them and they're really light and they're cheap. I, I don't have any of these but I have Boston Round Balls and Barnes Droppers. These are brown so it keeps the light out which is good for certain things um, and they are pretty cheap too and they have screw on caps. The Barnes Droppers are clear but the stopper is a dropper too so that's also really helpful, but it's a little bit insecure. It can come off. You will need some kind of heat source once you get more complicated. I don't have one or a magnetic stirrer, but I just use my stove. So you, some point, will need a hot plate. But I recommend you get a hot plate and a magnetic stirrer combined because sometimes you need to do both at the same time. Stir bars. You place this inside of the flask here and it stirs it as you can see. You can adjust the speed. There are many sizes though, but the bar shaped one that looks like a pill was the most common. You will need a mortar and pestle at some point when you start chemistry for grinding up powders or chunks of whatever it is. This increases surface area so it makes reactions hap happen a little bit faster. Funnels. You'll need a, um, some sort of funnel. I have glass funnels, but they can be broken a lot easier. I chipped my lip on here. But you can use polystyrene ones, but I don't have any. You'll need cheap beakers slash storing bottles. I got some of these at the dollar store, a 10 pack for a dollar. And they're pretty sturdy. They do crack easily, but they're pretty good as beakers. Uh, also, if you know a diabetic, they will have test strip bottles, and these are really good for 
storing things. They're relatively small, but they're really strong. So ask if you know a, a diabetic if you can have their empty test strip bottles. You'll need stir rods. They're cheap and they're used for stirring, obviously. Crucibles, stoppers, and cork borers. Crucibles, I don't really have used them very much. I don't have much of a use, but they're used to hold hot liquids. But I don't know if they will break or not if you have molten metal in them. They shouldn't. That's what they're for, but who knows. Rubber stoppers. These come in many different sizes, and they have, you can buy them pre board with holes in them and they come in a lot of different sizes so you have to make sure you get ones that will fit your glassware. Uh, cork borers are used to add the holes if you want a different size or something. These are good to have. Okay now onto the hardware. You need a pair of tongs. They're used for holding hot uh, objects or test tubes like over an open flame to heat stuff and um, you need ring stand two is better than one but I don't have two you also need um, some arms on them I prefer the ring stand right here I mean the just the ring arm whatever you want to call it and also uh, a three prong or two prong arm you can also get an A base ring stand but those are used for like heavy things or things you don't really want to break Condensers. Leibig condenser is one of the most common ones. You should get at least a 300 millimeter. That's what that one is. So what this does is water runs on the outer tube and it cools things on the inner tube so they condense if they're a gas or if you're just cooling the item. And then they go out here and into like a beaker and they come in here. You will need joints and stuff. I'm going to make a video on condensing though, so you'll see that. Also, this is where the water goes out, and this is where the, where the water goes in. This makes it so the water goes all the way through. It's supposed to have an angle. This is kind of the extreme angle, but you know, he's just holding it, so you want to have maybe. I'm not quite sure. Just a little bit. Allen condensers have bulbs in the center like that. They're, they do the same job, but it might condense a little bit better. Also, the gram condenser has spirals. This lets it cool a lot better. But you will lose product, but you will have a purer product if you use this one. But you will have more if you use the Leibig. Here are just a few condensers. Sorry, the picture turned out really weird. It was black and white reversed on what you see now on Google Images, but I don't know. It's Leibig, Allen, Graham, Timroth, which I do not have one of these. Fredericks, I don't really even know where you can buy one of those, but I don't have a Graham either. I'm going to get a Graham, and I have a Leibig right now. So thanks for watching. Please tell me if you liked this kind of video. I am sick right now, so my voice is a little strange. I have to talk kind of quiet. Um, but next video I will go over organic chemistry equipment that you will need as well as chemicals, condenser setup, and much more. So thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.